and in freedom, peace, and unity. Well, um, the statutory book that will confirm that is the Nigerian constitution. They will say, lawyers will say that is the grand norm in which on which everything we do stand, including the president and who becomes whatever in the country must be provided for, for by a clause or a section of the Nigerian constitution. And that uh, constitution itself is one thing so many Nigerians have found comfort in when they want to criticize the standing, the unity of this country itself. Some will say it's a military constitution. Some will say it was uh, formed uh, by one person to ensure that he remains the president and not just remain the president of this country for life, but perpetually controls this country. Well, we are in the process of what they call the Fourth Amendment of the Nigerian Constitution. The seventh legislator, the one that attended the 2015, attended to, they would have done that creditably well, but they hit the rock at the last minute when the then President Goodluck Jonathan refused to sign those amended clauses at the last minute. Um, interestingly, Toby, in a matter of days, precisely 16th of May, that's next week, it will be 11 years when another good attempt was thrown away on the premise of the attempt or uh, the uh, the preparation of the then president of the Obasanjo to elongate his own term. The 206 uh, amendment, which became popular for a short term agenda, was also officially thrown away on the 16th of May. 2006. Well, another attempt is said to amend the constitution. What are the salient clauses? That's what we'll be looking at on this uh, city on the citizens forum this morning. Dele Ayodo is my name, and I am Toby uh, Joseph. Just like I mentioned earlier, we'll be looking at uh, the final draft, but uh, we'll be focusing more on that which uh, some have uh, said has created more controversy in Nigeria, in the body politic of Nigeria, uh, than any other one, and that is uh, talking about uh, uh, succession or uh, presidential term limit. Uh, you recall the imbroglio that almost engulfed the nation uh, during the Yaradua uh, Jonathan Sagar, uh, shortly after the demise of the later Umar Musa uh, Yaradua. Uh, in office. Unfortunately, that uh, particular lacuna that was almost exploited by some so-called cabal has been taken care of now in the constitution. You will recall that the former president did not, or the late president did not, transmit a letter to the Senate in, in, in intimating them of his uh, uh, travel for uh, medical attention. And then the, the vice president was there uh, he, uh, and uh, remained a vice president without uh, acting in uh, for, for the president. And that almost created a crisis in the country. But eventually, he was made substantive president when the late president died. And then uh, he saw out the term, uh, which they were both elected in 2017. But the uh, report came out after that that there was some kind of gentleman agreement or deal that uh, former president Goodluck Jonathan will not seek a term uh, of, four, of four years in 2011. Well, you recall that uh, former president uh, Lucien Obasanjo crisscrossed the country to converse that uh, minority, uh, someone from an Ijo. Uh, a part from an Ijo nation should actually be allowed uh, for the sake of equity and justice. 2011, former President Gunnar Jonathan was re elected after staying out of the term of his uh, uh, predecessor, spending about six years as a president. And in 2015, he sought re election again, and that created another Ulabalu. President uh, Muhammad Buhari was elected in 2015 as against uh, former president, Goodluck Jonathan. And then he has uh, uh, the vice, able vice, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. The health of Mr. President has created this new speculation. And of course, uh, that is uh, why some people are saying that it might be the reason why the lawmakers are trying to insert it. Uh, don't don't let us uh, uh, join those who 
of course, the whole rich political uh, meaning, meaning to everything. Every but issue. it's 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 very pertinent that we look at this issue uh, going down memory lane to have a background of all this. Uh, the the position of uh, some people, uh, like I mentioned earlier, is that uh, for the sake of uh, equity, for the sake of fairness, or for the sake of not uh, plunging the nation into unnecessary tension, uh, heating up uh, of the polity. And of course, a uh, crisis, you must make sure that uh, when somebody is elected as substantive president and uh, have somebody from another part of the country uh, deputizing, uh, just as we have right now, it should uh, be left at that because the mandate is supposed to go to a particular region. And when a person sees out the term, he should not seek a fresh term. That seems to be uh, the uh, interpretation of the cross that the lawmakers are inserting or trying to insert in the constitution. We have someone in the studio that will be helping us uh, look at all these uh, issues uh, this morning. We have uh, a lawyer, Patrick Iwo, former NBA chairman at Berkota Branch. You're welcome once again to. Thank you very much. I'm good morning this morning. All right, lawyer Iwo. Um, of course, I'm sure you must have seen a couple of the clauses uh, in the Constitutional Amendment or the final draft as led by uh, the committees uh, responsible for Constitutional Amendment. Are you bothered about any of these clauses? Well, I am not really bothered as a person. But the problem is this. You see, most times we react in in a very very well, no let, let me let me say this most times we 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 apply the wrong treatment to a particular ailment now what the national assembly they are they are not they are trying to kind of give a legal solution to a political problem that particular clause in question more or less arose from pdp and if we had to tell ourselves the truth, that was, in fact, that is the reason why PDP is going under as of today. Now, it, the constitution did not specify for zoning. The constitution only provides for the office of the president, provides for the office of the vice president. And we all know that when the president is not there, the vice, the vice president should come in. And in any case, now when an elected president dies for any reason, that is the end. So it's not a question of now the vice president coming in now to continue the no. No, once he's dead, he's dead. The vice president now comes in in his own or her own individual right. No, sorry, let's say uh, for in defense of the PDP first, some people will say it was made clear by the party that this is a party arrangement. It is a party. They never inserted it in the constitution. It's not in the constitution. Why should other politicians, other political parties in Nigeria now adopt it and make it look as a national... Beautiful. Issue? You see, then, that is a problem we are having as a people. Trying to adopt PDP's own internal uh, policy or program as a national issue. Now, let me, before I get to that point, I want to say something. Now, when you, all the VPs, the governors, you see, it is wrong the way we treat them as pet tires. I have to state this from the onset. It's very wrong. We treat them as pet tires. Now, these are people, you contest this election, you cannot contest an election without a VP or a deputy. Now, you go in for strategic reason. Maybe you want to win the votes of Christians, you want to win the votes of Muslims, you want to win the votes of women, or you want to... Um, um, win the vote of a particular a section. session. Now, based on that, you go to that session and pick the other thing. Now, you win election with this fellow, you come around to say this person is a spare tire or is wrong. Now, so this is a problem we are having. When we are picking our VPs, or our DP, we do not look at the broader perspective. What happens if I'm not there? Now, you go back, You for whatever reason, you pick the person you feel that can. Now, once the problem now arises, the whole country is thrown into. Now, if for any reason, for goodness sake, 
the president, something happens, is in debt or incapacity or for whatever reason he cannot, the vice president steps in. And once the vice president steps in, he becomes the substantial president or the substantial governor as the case may be. Now, if for, uh, at the end of his time, for goodness sake, what stops this fellow from contesting? Let me use your own position. Now, even for the post of a legal, in the case of a legal defense, you have said once the president is dead, he's dead. The yes. VP is stepping in yes. as fresh. Yes. But the constitution provides a tenure of four years, yes. as we have it now. Yes. He could not complete that four years. Yes. So, how do you defend that legally that the person who is coming in is not completing? That then is starting his own. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is, is not coming in to complete. No, what the problem is, he's coming in. He is coming in to complete whatever remains of of that particular uh, presidency. Okay, he's coming in to complete it. That is. But you said, you know, the, what I'm trying to point out is, that, you know, this session we the Obasanjo, we keep on saying the Obasanjo, uh, the Motala Obasanjo regime. Mm -hmm. Even when Obasanjo was there, it's very, very wrong. Once Oba, Motala was there, it was dead. So it becomes Obasanjo regime. You can't, the, the, the Yaradua, Yaradua, um, Jonathan, Jonathan, what does that mean? The moment Yaradua died, he died. But the problem we having is that we all saw, we all knew what happened. When some people were trying to prevent for whatever reason, then the question is why? Is it the fault of the constitution? The answer is no. I have said it severally and I'm saying it again that yes, the constitution may not be a very perfect document, but we have a very good document that specifies clearly. No, 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 I will, let us look at the political uh, experience. Uh, uh, experiences of some of these uh, uh, clauses. Uh, let us go down memory lane, just like you mentioned. Obasanjo came in in 1999, uh, spent eight years, and was supposed to leave 2007. Uh, the PDP uh, encouraged zoning, so it was zoned back to the north, and so they went to the northwest, uh, Katina to be precise, and chose Yaradua. Now, Yaradua entered with Gulo uh, Jonathan as his running mate want to die two years in office. So the expectation of the North was that Yaradua was supposed to spend, or whoever from the Northern extraction was supposed to spend another eight years after the South had used eight years of, uh, of Basanjo. But two years, that was not to be. Jonathan came in, saw out the two years remaining in Yaradua's term, and then re-elected, was re-elected in 2011, I was now seeking re-election in 2015, which if he had completed, or if he had won and completed, would have created another eight years president. Uh, no, that would be 10 years to be precise, because 2011 to 15, 15 to 2019, that would have been another 10 years for the South, where the Northerners would have had just two years. Do you think that would have been fair? And those who are agitating for this insertion of this clause? Now, you see, the thing is, <laughs> it's very funny. In the sense that, and like you rightly pointed out, it's a political equation. Okay. Now, who 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 who, who did the who did the arithmetic? <laughs> who did the arithmetic? Is it the constitution? Now, you see, the the arithmetic was done on certain assumptions. On the assumptions there is that PDP was going to continue to be winning. Whether they are voted in or they are not voted in, they are continue to be winning. So yes, and all other things have to be. In place, but for the sake of the fragile nature, you know, the fragile nature of our unity of our peaceful coexistence and the north, south, east, west divide uh, of the nation. Uh, you know, the agitation in the southeast is still there, even in the south, south is still there. Uh, many, if you speak to many uh, southerners, uh, especially uh, those of the joy extraction, they still believe that they are some. Uh, eh, was booted out of office or was rigged out of office or was denied his right. Uh, you know, so if you look at all these factors, do you think it would be out of place for us to encourage this rotation of power instead of zoning? Beautiful. Now, you know one thing, yes, we as, we as a people, if the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria sits down and now say, okay, oh, we are going to rotate. Beautiful. Now, the thing is, everybody will now have to agree to that principle of rotation. But where, what, 
of a situation where we have a situation we have on hand is a situation where even the people who agreed to the rotation themselves we are the people that, that that faltered it it was pdp that agreed to rotation okay yes the not you take the not took now somewhere along the line the act of god because it's god that gives lives it's god that takes now then uh, jonathan completed that time now under the most circumstances one would have expected Jonathan, you go and sit down. Let the North bring another candidate. Okay? But for whatever reasons known to PDP, PDP started lined it and now brought Jonathan. Now, this you now raising this issue that, well, you see the South South, okay, you see they have not ruled before, okay, give them this opportunity. Now, you, you, you made that error. If you had told them point blank, this error is not for the South South, it's for the North. Let the North complete their time. Fine. But they didn't do it for primordial or sentimental reasons they now brought in a south south so bringing in a south south do you expect the south south to spend on to spend only two years they'll be shouting telling you that they too are entitled to eight years it, it will I, I will come back to uh, that clause um, of how you take over the ascendancy in the case of death but in this course of this discussion we have used the word northern candidate Southern candidate rather than the candidate. Now that takes me to the question of the indigenship and citizenship, which is another clause being amended uh, in the draft. How do we reconcile this? Not undermining the fact that ethnicity and where you come from remains a major part of our development in this country. I want to start by saying this. Ethnicity and religious remains when we want it to remain. It is when we want it that we invoke. Ah, this man is an Okoro man or this man is a... But it's the reality. Oh, John, the fine, beautiful. But in other situations, nobody nobody remembers that. I want to give... When Ghani Faimi was laying all his life on for the uh, citizens of this, who remembered he was a Muslim? Who remembered her? You should understand. Even I for once never even knew where he was until all these things. But that aside, I want to say something. I, as an individual, I'm from Imo State, an Igbo man, okay, and I'm residing here. If tomorrow I venture to contest the presidency of this country, am I not contesting as an Igbo man? So that, that's the question. Where will your indigenship come from? The, 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 the main fact that I decide to settle here as, a, as of choice does not change my, my, my indigenous. Okay, no. Let's go to your children. Okay. Who were born here, who grew up here. So Look, where would... Let me tell own? you something. My own personal opinion on this is, if you like, settle there for a donkey years, you are a settler, for goodness sake. If you, if so I you like, can... hold on. If I like, let me settle here for the next hundred years. Let my children and grandchildren settle here for the, for good day. Will you say your grandchildren are settling here? I, I wouldn't decide for them you because my own, there. Mm -mm, my own no. father didn't. You, you settled here, that's yes. the truth, because yes. you migrated. By, by choice. They were born here. They were born here. And grew up here. So would, you, would it still be appropriate to use the word settled here the, for the, those ones? The assist, for their generation. The beautiful. They are still settlers. They are still settlers. Because they may wake up and decide to migrate to some other places. Who will stop them? That is the way I, as an individual, look at it. No matter how long your grandfather or great grandfather. So how should the constitution treat this aspect? Which which we treating which? Then now it boils down to one fact. If the people with whom you are in, integrated with now finds you suitable to go and represent for goodness sake, nobody will stop you. In Lagos State, we have some areas where some Igbos are representing some people. Now, as you just introduced me, you introduced me as the past chairman of MPA. Did I, did I contest did they, on, the, on the basis of being an evil man? But the people said, okay, fine, Mr. We will find you can do this thing for us. If tomorrow they say, Mr. Ibu, well, we think you can represent us well at the, at the House of Assembly, or you, we think we can, you can serve us as a governor, the, who is going to stop that? But do I have... No, that, that, that's the question. Good. Should the constitution stop that or the should the constitution no. encourage that? The, the constitution... Because you, your position is that you remain a settler. Yes. And then, by position of the books, by yes. like foreigner. Yes. So, what should be the position of the constitution? Well, the, 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 the constitution should allow allow the, be the way it is presently. 
amending this thing to putting all these things will not help in any case in even if you do it those who are operating the constitution will they give effect to it that is a problem we've been having we have not maximized applied the constitution the way it is but the constitution is being applied to suit some personal individuals that is the problem even the current amendment the current the, yes we are meant to suit we are meant to suit we to a particular a particular this is not a brother or that is our first i will give you instance before now before that amendment governorship elections gubernatorial ended where Court of Appeal. appeal yeah. Now, what happened when the Court of Appeal now started obtaining some of these impeachment, which everybody knew was illegal? Did they now, the PDP, the powers that be, they now sat down, agreed on a, a cup of tea or whatever it is. Okay, let us amend this thing, take it to Supreme Court. At the end of the day, who, 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 who suffered it? It's them. So, what I'm trying to say is that most of these amendments we are making is not being done in good faith. Okay, uh, I, will, I want us to look at a proposal which uh, uh, recently I had a chat with the uh, Oshine of Okereba who supported a proposal at the National Conference that we should have two vice presidents. Uh, his own opinion is that when you have the president from a particular region, you have the first vice president from that same region and another vice president from another region. Why? Because of this kind of scenario that played out during the Adra and which some fear may also play out in this administration. Uh, when the, f the president dies, the first vice president from that same region would automatically step in and see out to the term of that predecessor so that that particular region will not feel shortchanged and they will not heat up the quality unnecessarily. Do you support that proposal? I I don't support it. I don't support it. And my reason is very simple. That even if you have that be the case, once the, the president dies, and now, in quote, now the powers that be don't want that particular vice president to take over, they'll start scheming again. Look, we are never tired of scheming. Let me say this. Let me say this. Last year, it was being rumored that pressure was being uh, 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 put on the vice president to resign. Yes or no? Why? That's the question. So the thing is, the power, irrespective of how beautiful a document you come out with, the the idea of, of uh, the 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 the, the revered monarch is very, is very fine, it's very beautiful. But put it on place in Nigeria, it will not work because somebody will wake up somewhere in the morning. Who does not like the face of that particular vice president? I will now say, why should he? Then you will now, now say, it's okay, now come. Maybe the man from the other vice president, their area has not produced. Okay, let us give it to him. They will now go home and amend the constitution. That is the problem we are having. Now, this problem, why, why do we, we've not asked ourselves one basic question. Why do we have this problem in the first place? Why well, do you think we have this problem? Beautiful. It's because of selfishness, selfish interest. If we have a president who, who is working for the benefit of Nigerians, for goodness sake. Toby, if a president gives you what he's entitled to, do you bother to know where he comes from? No. Beautiful. We, 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 I want, we, the Ibos are clamoring for their own president because they believe that the ones who have not done anything for them. But then, even if you do that, will that solve, his, will that solve the problem? What has the, the West got? What do they have to show for the nine, eight years of uh, General Basinger's administration as president of this country? Ask me, what do they have to show? If you ask me, I'll tell you nothing. Now, this is, we've had him as a civilian president, we've had him as a military president. What, do, what does the, the West have to show? So, insisting this president must come from an area that does not help in the long run. Now, Nigeria should rather clamor, put pressure on the powers that be, do what you are supposed to do. Give us what we are entitled to, to. Now, even when you come nearer home to all the states, the states are being governed, are being governed by governors from their respective states. But then why, why as the citizens, why are they still complaining? Of marginalization. Of marginalization. Now, you, let, let's go back to the issue of the vice president 
who is elevated after the uh, exit or the death of its boss, the president, in the present uh, amendment. Now, do you not see that as capable of solving this selfish most we've talked about? Because apparently, whatever ambition that person has has been cut short because you can only save out that tenure and then no longer qualified to contest by or extend that uh, tenure. If that is done, we may end up also crippling ourselves. What if in a situation now where you have a vice president that is capable of delivering the goods? You will not limit him because of you now say, okay, look at the West. No, the it's clear what he will do is to refuse to take up that position or resign from his position as the vice president to enable him contest the next election if he feels that he's qualified and the people feels is the one who can do it. I think that's what they are proposing, which will solve this issue of selfish and then over ambition. It will solve that, perhaps, and then create another problem. What will be the problem? It's created? beautiful. Now, let us look at the present scenario. We, the other time the president was away on medical uh, vacation, now you see, that was the error. Either by coincidence or whatever reason, the, the, the dollar went down. <laughs> and Nigerians were saying more like, <laughs> PND, please just stay there, let this man continue. Okay, what if maybe, and now the president again is on the way on medical, you know, and the president, now, if at the end of the day it's shown that the man there is capable of delivering oh, this more thing. capable. Oh, beautiful. Thank you very much. And at the end of the day, you've amended the constitution now too. So he will now have to resign and now start to seek. Can't you see we are, we, we are creating a problem for ourselves in our attempt to satisfy the personal ambition of some few individuals. I, I, I would have been thinking, you see, that's the problem I keep on saying that the National Assembly, in fact, we, don't, we, we, we have problems where we have problems. When the National, the National Assembly ought to, they are the institution to check, meet the presidency. But they are not doing that job because of their own personal aggrievement. Okay, uh, let's look at this again. The attempt of the 7th legislature. The uh, Seventh National Assembly, which ended in 2015, to amend the uh, uh, same constitution, was almost successful. But for the disagreement, unexpected disagreement between the National Assembly and the President at that time, who refused to sign that into law because, according to him, the stringent condition of amending the constitution and the legislative procedures were not fully followed. And then the whole thing crumpled. As a lawyer looking at this uh, amendment, do you think this eighth assembly have fully complied with all this regulation? And at the end of the day, it would not be another effort in futility. Well, it it is sincerely I have not been following the procedures they they've been adopting. I must say that from the beginning. But one thing is is clear. You see, we operate a rigid constitution, and that. Is and uh, that means come, you cannot amend this constitution at will. There is a laid down procedure for you to amend, and if for any reason that that procedure is not followed, it's not even it's not even for the president. No, it's not for him. Even if the president signs that amendment into 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 law, it is for the judiciary to interpret and and decide if they have. So it's a job for the you know for 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 a PDP dominated National Assembly to have passed something and then the, the presidency occupied by the PDP is telling you it did not it shows you a lot that there is an underlying problem somewhere which we do not know. You have also talked about selfishness on the part of those who are ruling us and then personal interest on the part of members of the National Assembly who are supposed to represent us. That now takes me to the issue of how to amend that constitution itself. Would a referendum of the people be better or would it complicate issues? You see, under, under the constitution as it is presently, it does not make provision for any referendum. It does not. But then, even if you, if you insert that provision for a referendum, we, knowing this country the way it is, 
the dark chevrolet don't will still be manipulated because it's still going to be conducted by the same INEC. So if INEC is conducting elections, everybody is crying. So what gives us the hope that they are going to conduct a free and fair referendum? That's the problem. So it's not even a, we have very beautiful the, the problem we are having is those who are implementing this things. No, uh, uh, let us uh, step outside of the law a bit and look at uh, what's happening in the quality. Uh, do you think that this apprehension of what might happen to President Muhammad Buhari is the cause of all these unnecessary uh, permutations and uh, insertions in the constitution? And uh, the, the the use of uh, the, the the plan to actually, as some of our as some have alleged, that the plan to cage or to whittle down the influence of the acting president. Yeah, I don't need to consult a soothsayer to say yes to that. And of course, it's very the answer. Is, you see, you we, once beaten, twice shy. But the, you see, the problem now is this: we've seen uh, the, the Yaradua, we've seen Jonathan. Yes, you are, you are Adua, okay, it is, it is, we, we, we saw what happened, yes, he died, yes, Yaradua was in superimposed on Nigerians, yes, Obasanjo knew the health status of uh, uh, Niger, uh, Yaradua before he superimposing him, he knows he was going to die, then uh, 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 good luck will take over. Beautiful. Now, what of Buhari, who superimposed him on, who superimposed him on Nigerians? Is it not the same Nigerians now who will voluntarily say, okay? At least going by the results released by ANEC. So it's the Nigerians now that says we want Buhari. And now it turns out this way. You find out that they're not, they have every reason to be apprehensive. But then they don't have anybody to blame but their stars. So they are now envisaging a situation where this other thing will happen again. Look, this is second term again, and so which means and this thing now will go to the to the to the south again. Ah. Uh, they, they, come, who did this to us? So they they they, are, they will be quite in order if if they think that way, which I think they are thinking. But well, what what danger do you think this portends? Uh, not only for good governance and uh, effective and smooth running of uh, of government, but also to our politics and the nation. The danger there is they will be destroying this country as an entity. If they, if they dare do it, they will be destroying. And once they do it, it will only take time to manifest. Just as when PDP was doing all these things, when they when uh, uh, they, they allowed for whatever reason, good luck, Jonathan, to recontest, instead of saying no, Mr. President, you cannot do this. We zoom this. But for whatever reasons known to them, they didn't. They allowed them. So they, in other words, they they, they saw their bet right now in quotes for porridge. Who? I some people will also want to paint you um, by the lips when you refer to PDP as you make it look as if whatever they decide is what the country decides. Jonathan was eventually presented to Nigeria, and Nigerians voted and says he's the one they want. So it's not as if um, it's like the UK thing where it's a party caucus election and then the person, the leader of the party becomes the prime minister. He was eventually presented to Nigerians and they voted for him. So rather than blaming the party, we will not blame the entirety of the those that voted. No, no, no. If, if, if we do that, we'll be, we, we'll be omitting an important thing. Remember, when that thing happened, everybody was so happy. You know, for one say we are we are going to have a president yeah, because with we a are doctor. A ruled by sentiment. So, so beautiful, that, that... beautiful. So, you know, we are going to have a president for one that has a PhD. We are going to rule by a president who is young. We are going to rule by a president from the uh, this thing. But at the end of the day, what, what happened? No, what I'm saying is, on that occasion, the PDP presented the right candidate. Don't you think so? I will answer that question directly. Yes, remember the PDP told us how many years they were going to govern this country. Are you with me? So it's assumed that whatever, in fact, whatever they believe that whatever yeah, they but that do, didn't come to pass. Well, that, well, that it, it, it didn't come to pass. That's what I'm telling so you. That Nigerians still stopped it. Beautiful. From coming to pass. Beautiful. So at that time, PDP presented a candidate that was suitable 
and that, acceptable. Yes. Now, yeah. why don't us as a people try to strengthen these institutions that will checkmate these politicians rather than encouraging them? All right, uh, if you just joined us, it's citizens from On The Day Break Show. We have in the studio, Lawyer Patrick Ewo, a former NBA chairman of Bekuta Branch, and together we're looking at the fourth amendment of the Constitution of the Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, focusing on the clause which prevents a vice president uh, seeing out the term of his predecessor from recontesting. Uh, a fresh uh, turn. Well, we'll be back after the national news at 10. After that, we'll give the floor to you to actually ventilate your own opinion and contributions. Stay with us. We'll be back. Welcome back. It's still Citizens from On The Day Break Show. Today, Thursday, May 11, 2017. On Citizens from this morning, we're looking at uh, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, uh, with a special focus on that uh, provision, uh, which uh, bars uh, the Vice President uh, seeing out the term of uh, a predecessor in the case of either resignation or death, uh, from seeking a fresh term of four years. And we have in the studio with lawyer Patrick Iwo, former chairman of Belkota branch of the NBA. Lawyer Iwo, um, we were looking at uh, a whole lot of issues before we went on that break. Uh, let us quickly look at one issue that is hitting up the polity right now, which may also be connected to the constitutional amendment that we are talking about and the issue of how long the president can embark on medical leave and how long the vice who takes over power in that uh, situation can also act as president the constitution seems to be silent on all this or maybe in other words how long can the president be officially away, away from duty from duty well, of course, you don't expect the constitution to contain every everything, uh, uh, every aspect of human endeavor. Mm -hmm. Because in any case, some of these issues cannot be sage. But every case should be treated as uh, according to its own circumstances. Now, uh, it's, it's, it's really very very difficult to say because, given the the circumstances of our own society, if it were to be in advanced societies. Of course, by now, Nigerians would have known the ailment the president is suffering from. Right now, it's, it's in the realm of speculation, so we don't know. Now, if we had known all these things, it would have been able to help. Now, what, that is number one. Number two, now, even if the, uh, the, 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 the president should now declare today and say, I'm having headache, just headache, believe you me, the PDP will say there is machinery in motion. Oh, is incapacitated by, by, by that headache. Let's get him out. That's the unfortunate situation we have on ourselves. But then, if he stays too long, or if that decision is really affecting, right now, well, before I continue, I will, I will just have to say that well, I'm a Pugohari man. So whatever I'm going to say is going to be biased. So if anybody accuses me of that, I will accept it and I will say. But to me, I, I don't think the situation has really calls for any 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 emergency or any other decision. I think the situation is still on that point. All right, so let's uh, switch over to the other side. You, the listener, let's get you engaged. Let's uh, go straight to the tweets. Uh, Yemi Da Vinci uh, tweeted this very long tweets. Uh, I align with the position of Afeni Ferry that what the country really needs is restructuring and not another constitution amendment. Uh, God Patrick is right that all these amendments is just for the benefit of the, of the political class, which is less than 5% of the population. Shame. Instead of what Kabi Sitojo just said, I propose uh, the president of, uh, okay, the presidium of six VPs with six years single term with one year rotational presidency among them. Do the people pushing for this amendment have a knowledge of what we do not know about President Buhari's health? Why are they bringing it that close now? All right, so that's it. You want to react? All right, who you want uh, to react? First, uh, quickly, let me find out from you. Um, I know about the search 
the president is just um, any other and any other man. Will it be right to refer to the president as just any man? No. The president is goes beyond. In fact, it's, it's not any other man. It's not any other man, honestly. The president, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. No, no, no. You're talking about the most powerful person in Africa. That's the truth. At least in black world. Oh, oh. Even if he's the president of the smallest country, no, the president is not any just other. any man. Yeah, it's not just. Because if we treat the president as just any other man, it then, it then means we are just any other people. That's the truth. Now, let me start with uh, Honorable Lamre. Uh, yes. It's, it's not a person of moral justification that the victim must step in. It's a, it's a constitutional issue. It's a constitutional right. It's not moral. It's constitutional and legal too. So it's not something anybody can start maybe going, organizing demonstration or a lota. No? As it was, unfortunately, it was done during uh, Yaradua. This was very, very, very unfortunate. And then too, we, we had a sleeping vice president who caused most of those problems. Because if the vice president has risen to the occasion to assert his constitutional right, maybe, maybe, maybe. But then we won't have to yes, maybe we won't have yes, we won't have to wait for 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 for, for yeah, Professor Walesion can right. go to say enough is enough. We had a sleep in and everybody saw it the four years he, he, he was at the helm. Was he really at the helm of affairs then? Sure, That's the question. To, the yes. Issue. Now issue of uh, import, the importance of uh, from Wahi, the importance of the legislative arm um, cannot be overemphasized. Honestly, because as a matter of fact, they ought to checkmate the president. They've been constitutionally empowered to to guide, no, to, to, to check and balance that thing. But unfortunately, for their own personal reasons too, they are not doing it. Now, back to, I think, Gaffar, he said, yes, you know, to stick to the spirit of the constitution. I mean, yes, he asked the question, what do you think we can do to move ahead? The only thing we can do if you, is, is to stick to the spirits and letters of the constitution. Let us let us apply this constitution the way it is written. Let us apply it in the spirit in which it is written. I think with that we can move on. Wherever there is any error, the judiciary is there. That's my own. That's my my, my take on that question. Now to the fourth caller, Taiwo. He said anybody can be yes, and of course, of course, yes, true. That's the truth. Anybody can be sick. sick at any time. Nobody anticipated this. Nobody. We we, we saw a, a Buhari that was so passionate that even when he lost this thing at the third time, this man was sweeping for the country. Even though most people said the man was sweeping because he lost the thing. And again, I must have to say this. We have to thank the present, uh, president because this is one man that has to some extent been able to add, at least he's attempting to keep to the spirit of the constitution. Yaradua was there, all these things happened, there was no letter. This issue of the, the content of the letter. Yes, the content shows one thing, there's a cabal. Yes, but then, whether, in whichever way it is couched, the thing is, the president, vice president steps in. What if the vice president steps in, whether he's coordinating the activities of government, of course he's there to shut over a vaccine. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a person of semantics if you ask me. He is there. All right, the let, let's go back to so, Is there anybody who really there, wants to? There is a fifth. There is a fifth fellow. The last one said the unity. You know one thing. You see, it's very important unity in diversity. It's very important. No, it's very wrong to have this a notion that Nigeria is one. That Nigerians are one. That no, there are some differences. Now, as an Igbo man, if I come to your house and you give me a, a glass of water, I'll be looking at you and I'll be smiling. But you, the moment you give me cola nut. Or you even tell me you don't have cola nut in the house, I will accept. A Yoruba man comes to your house and you give him cola nut, he will look at you and say, what is this man saying? But until you give him that... So, we have to understand one thing. Yes, we are, we are diverse as a people. But then, we have to take pride in that unity in diversity and make maximum use of it. All right, we'll go back to so pick more calls. 0809-868-7344. You are on. Good morning. Mr. Olakilani has asked three questions. So, is that the question of uh, constitution to spell out? It's not possible for this constitution to spell out every is and was that you think, uh, that will govern the nation. The constitution uh, only defines the citizenship. Maybe under this and the issue of uh, 
um, um, indigenship and um, citizenship. citizenship, no indigenship and the settlership. Our youth, it's just all this. But it's it's it's, it's being brought to fall by politicians of late. Well, even be, if they can amend the constitution to spell that one out, so be it. Nothing to worry about about that as long as the constitution clearly spells out what indigenous and the citizen and the settlership is all about. That is number one. Number two, said, can I lay claim to dual uh, indigenship? I doubt if you can. What I'm trying to give you is my personal opinion and my personal answer. Now, Nigeria operates a patrilineal society. So we go from fathers. So you, you, unless you want to tell the whole world now that you have two, two, two fathers, which, which I think is not possible. So, you, of course, you have to go. You only, only, only have to have one because of the patrilineal society we operate as a nation. Yeah, Although, in, yes, in the case of those who claim Nigeria and still have the passport of other countries. Oh, the constitution spells out that. When you want to contest, well, of course, what happens? You okay, have to drop one. You have to drop one. And although, uh, yes, I agree that in some societies in Nigeria, they have quasi matrilineal, like a bad society, for instance. They have a quasi matrilineal, They're like the Calabar, the ethics, they have a quasi matrilineal. But then that is a cultural thing, not within the, na the national level. If, as an, though I'm an Igbo man now, if, I, if my wife happens to be a Yoruba and from a royal family, chances are my child can even be an Oba here. Now nobody raises an. So if nobody is raising an eye eyebrow over such things, why at the national level, if not for private sentiments or whatever? Now, the last one, can we free this, uh, this in, if we can make peace from by, if, by going into parliamentary system of uh, government. government or constitution. I doubt if we can. And my reason is very is this. Remember, this country started with the parliamentary system of with the parliamentary constitution. The same constitution being operated by India. Although we do the mistake of thinking that we inherited our own parliamentary from the UK. No, we inherited our own parliamentary system from India because India is a federal state, a federal structure with a parliamentary. The UK is a unitary state with. A, a, a parliamentary now india till date are still operating that same constitution they set up at the at the commencement i think in 1947 or all about yes. till date they are still operating it but we operated the parliamentary system of uh constitution for, for just four, six, yeah, years. six years six years or just about 1966 down. Years. then everybody was everybody was shouting it says was we buried it perhaps maybe talking about reducing cost okay I don't really mind. Let's go back to the parliamentary constitution. But then, we, unless we change, because the problem is not in, a, in our own in stars. It's a problem, but in our own stars yeah. as individuals. Yeah. How do we system. operate these constitutions we've been having? Mm. That's a problem. All right, uh, let's quickly add this uh, tweet to it. Uh, Time will turn up which says, the amendment is in order, provided the vice president will be seen through the second term of the president, considering Nigeria sit tight her syndrome and the lawmakers are not banning the political parties but the persons we know that we don't practice party politics in nigeria uh, yamida vinci once again says on the issue of indigenship i think we can make a, a, a buy for second generation settlers if they agree with the culture and traditions okay um messages coming over the short code abdurashu de Kela says Nothing is wrong in constructive criticism, so like that, not like the one coming from PDP and some senators on PMB's health issues. Uh, why crying foul? Making issues out of no issue. Uh, kudos to the guest of the house for his brilliant submission. We are wonderful, sir. For those wishing PMB dead, they should expect condolence letter from him. Uh, governance is going. Governance is going on. Professor Shibajo is in charge. Uh, I should have killed sent to that one. Uh, this one says, Good morning, all. Tunde Daniel from Akuma just says, My submission is very simple. If people get the legislature it deserves, after all, we elected them or allowed them to force themselves on us. Thank you. All right, this one says, The members of the Senate uh, are, indif are di indifferent to good things. Nigerians do not need constitutional amendment. What we need is true democracy and true federalism. God bless Nigeria. Engineer Joseph sent in that one. At this point, we'll still wait for the other arm of 
the National Assembly and then they harmonize these two positions. The House of Reps has submitted their position. That's what we are looking at. After that, we will await the signature of the president. Let us assume the president has, will have no objection to all this. Can this be stopped now? Of course, it can. How? It can, yes. Now, an individual can wake up and challenge it in the court. The constitutionality of it, that, and the, the process of the, 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 the leading to the amendment, if it breached or traversed the constitution, somebody can say, no, the, the, this particular procedure was breached and everything. And based on that, the court, and the court says, well, look at it, it did not follow the procedure, they can't stop it. Or definitely not. But the problem is, you see, most of these things are not being tested. And if they have been, they have been for, for a very particular reason. They are not being tested in the court of law. That is that is the problem we are having. Yeah, but we expect you, the lawyers, to do that uh, for us. Not Mr. Yodu, the lawyer, are, I, I... Not those I, who are on, rushing to on, get what to eat. I cannot, an, an individual, wake up and, unless I have the standing to sue. I cannot. You no, as a I, citizen. Though, even as a citizen, there are a lot of things you cannot. The thing is, what is your own particular interest in that matter? What is your own specific interest? It's so although if those the, people the with specific beautiful set up in a uh, Addison, your Senator Abraham Addison against the National Republic of Nigeria. So that's the problem. Now, and if to that extent you will now have to amend the constitution because it, that problem arose from the constitution because the constitution said anybody who has an interest or is, you know, if the constitution said well, puts in such a way that anybody can wake up, so be it. And these are the critical things we ought to have been look, looking at. Not, uh, Not the, all those trivial things. Yes. All right, uh, we must uh, thank you, Pastor, uh, Patrick Iwo, for coming onto the show this morning. We appreciate and of course, we appreciate everybody who's been a part of it, those who contributed via the different means, and those of you who just uh, patiently and comfortably listen and enjoy to say, God bless you all. God bless Nigeria. God bless Rock City. Daily Ayodo is my name. And I am Toby Joseph. Have a wonderful Thursday.